Hello, everyone. I'm Pastor Jason at Riverside Church, and this is your midweek encouragement. Hey, everyone. This is Pastor Jason again. Thank you so much for joining me today on this Wednesday evening as I had the privilege and opportunity to speak to you and hopefully bring you some encouragement this week. Today I'm going to the book of Mark, chapter number 8, and we're going to be looking at a very familiar portion of Scripture to, well, I say familiar, but it's familiar to those of us that may have been in church, and and if you're not a church person or haven't been in church in a while, hopefully you'll be encouraged, blessed, and you'll get to enjoy this too, and together maybe we'll get to learn something new and exciting from God's Word. In the book of Mark, chapter number 8, there's a story in there that talks about Jesus healing the eyes of a blind man. He's healed a couple of different blind men in the New Testament. And interestingly enough, he healed them in different ways. Uh, one, he would, you know, uh, spit on the ground, make mud and put it on their eyes and they would be healed. And, and, and to another, they would speak and they would be healed. But th- now this story is a little bit unusual, how Jesus healed this blind man and some of the circumstances that surround it. But as I was reading it and, and, and just kind of meditating on it, I couldn't help but to notice some wonderful, wonderful encouragements that came from this story. So I'm reading from the book of Mark chapter 8, and I'm going to the 22nd verse, and, and I'll start there. And it says this, When they arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus, and they begged him to touch the man and heal him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, Can you see anything now? The man looked around and said, I can see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hand on on the man's eyes again, and his eyes were opened. His sight was completely restored, and he could see everything clearly. And Jesus sent him away, saying, Don't go back into the village on your way home. Now, I just want to take a couple of minutes, and I'm just going to touch on a couple of thoughts here this week, and then the next few weeks, I'll need you to tune back in and join me on this little journey through this text as we work our way through it to get to the end to find out uh, uh, what happened to this man at the end of this story and and some of the interesting insights that Jesus has given to me as it relates to this or God's given to me as it relates to this. Point number one is this, and I'll be brief. It said, they brought a blind man to him. It said, they brought. Somebody brought this man. In other words, it tells me that in order for this blind man to end up to where Jesus was, somebody had to touch him, get a hold of him, or he had to touch somebody and get a hold of them in order to be led to where Jesus was. And I thought about that, and I thought about, you know, if they took him by the hand and and led this blind man to where Jesus was, their touch was good enough to lead the man, but their touch wasn't good enough to heal the man. Can I just say this to you? You might be surrounded by some people right now that that their touch is good at leading you. They, they provide leadership. They're, they can lead you. They're, they're good at doing that, but, but their touch isn't really healing you, and what you need is healing. And I just want to encourage you and let you know that, that, that it matters who touches you. It matters who, who you get around that, that just doesn't lead you, but also can bring healing to you. It said they brought him. And so now I want to talk to you about the they. Who are these they? And the they are these people. The they are the people that refuse to let this man remain in blindness. Refuse to let this man stay in a place where, where even though they could lead him, they couldn't heal him. They were like, but you know what? I refuse to let him stay in his dysfunction. I refuse to let him stay. Not that being blind is dysfunctional. I'm not, I didn't mean to say it like that, but, that but, but, but I refuse to leave this man in a state where he can't see, where he's, where he's in a dark place. And so they led him out of that. They were, they, were, they were leading him. They brought this man to where Jesus is. And so my encouragement to you is this. 
God has surrounded you with people that absolutely refuse to let you stay in the state or the condition that you are in, and they're trying to get you closer to God. They're trying to lead you closer to God. And I want you for the next few minutes, or I want you to think about it this week and think about the people that God's put in your life that he surrounded you with that is leading you or pushing you or bringing you to a place that God is in order to get you out of a place or a state of blindness or darkness or dysfunction or 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 wherever it is that you're unhealthy. And so this week, I want to encourage you with this. Find some people in your life and celebrate them. Call them on the phone, text them, uh, 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 shoot them a, a Facebook message saying, hey, I just want to thank you for helping me and leading me into a better place or a better part of my life or out of a place of darkness and into a place of light and just celebrate that person and thank them. We all have them in our lives and you need to find yours and celebrate them because God's got people. And if, if, if you can't think of them, he's going to send you some people. I pray in the name of Jesus that will lead you out of the place that you're in and get you to where he is. We ought to thank God for the people that are leading us to where he is. I bless you. I want to encourage you. Come back next week. We're just going to keep moving through this until we get to the very end. Y'all take care. Do me a favor. Like this, share, and follow. Share this with somebody that might need to hear this encouragement, that might need this. I bless y'all. I'll see you next week. Take care.